Hello everyone, welcome to Lime Guru channel. In this video, we will learn about Kubernetes. So we will start with what is Kubernetes. Let me write down here. What is Kubernetes? So before I directly go into the Kubernetes concept, I just want to bring up this point that you should be familiar with the concepts of dockers and containers. So this is a prerequisite if you want to learn Kubernetes. Uh, so dockers and containers, these two things you should be well aware of so i'll be briefly touching upon these concepts and then i'll be jumping on the kubernetes that how kubernetes is bringing efficiency into the world of docker and containers so what happened what used to happen earlier was whenever anybody anybody needs to deploy an application onto infrastructure organizations used to buy physical hardware so that was let's say physical server and then an app needs to be deployed here so this was very unoptimized approach where one app is running on a one physical server it is not at all cost optimized then concept of vm came into picture so what the concept of vm was onto the same physical server you can divide this server into multiple vms so let's say this is my vm1 this is vm2 vm3 and vm4 so on each vm you can run individual app so this bring some efficiency in terms of cost optimization that now you can run multiple apps onto the server but still it was not fully optimized in a way that every vm has its own operating system which was eating up lot of memory and resources of to the server just to maintain different operating system it was eating up lot of resources within your server resources now after that the approach of containers came into picture where into a server you can have just one operating system and onto the single operating system you can have multiple containers so in the in the vm approach every uh, every vm has its own os so this is let's say os1 os2 os3 os4 but here we have a single os and in each os you can have multiple containers let's say container 1 container 2 container 3 container 4 now in each container you can run your app so basically you need to make your app in a containerized fashion you should be able to containerize your application and then you can deploy your application onto containerized infrastructure so this because of this single os and then cost optimization thing that you can have multiple apps onto a single server and because containers are also lightweight these are lightweight because they don't have their own operating system it uses the underlying operating system of the server only this choice of infrastructure became widely popular now many organization be it small scale organization or being a large scale organization most of the organizations are moving towards containerized infrastructure where most of the developers are having their devops team where they are deploying their application onto this containerized infrastructure now you are aware about this uh, approach of deploying your application onto container platform now think about a scenario uh, now i'll be jumping uh, i'll be uh, touching upon the concepts of kubernetes so hear it carefully that when i have mentioned about the Q, uh, the containers concept so here you you have seen that it's a container one two three four four containers but in a practical organizational scenario you will have huge number of containers let's say there are multiple applications running on multiple containers so in that scenario you need some other platform which can manage your containers right so in order to manage your containers this kubernetes comes into picture so kubernetes it's a platform which can help you to manage your containers so it can help you to manage your containers so it can act as a container manager you can think of it can manage your containers why do you need containers management because in a large organization you will not have five or ten containers running into production you will have thousands of containers running running onto onto your production cluster in a large scale organization and even if uh, you don't have huge number of uh, containers if, even if you have some limited number of containers then also kubernetes bring in some added advantages some added features using which you would like to deploy your applications onto any containerized platform through kubernetes and we will discuss about all of those features in the uh, in in this video but at a high level kubernetes helps you to manage your containers 
in an efficient way it helps you it gives a lot of edit features also uh, along with management of uh, containers and those features are let's say i'll just mention about one feature which is auto scaling what auto scaling means so let me write down here i'll briefly talk about auto scaling here so it also gives you a feature of auto scaling so auto scaling it's a feature let's say you have uh, developed your application this is let's say your application now today let's say based on some certain amount of traffic you decide that you want to run this application onto two containers let's say this is your container one and this is your container two you have deployed your application here so this is your app here running here as well as here running here also now let's say tomorrow let's say the traffic increases now these two containers are not able to cope up with the load of the traffic which you are anticipating now the traffic has increased uh, by by a great margin which you were not expecting so what kubernetes will do it will automatically launch a new container c3 and it will deploy your app automatically so this feature is provided by kubernetes itself that it supports auto scaling you can scale up your infrastructure and you can scale down your infrastructure based on the configurations the way how you have configured your application deployments you can automatically configure these features also scaling up and scaling down within your infrastructure you don't need to do anything kubernetes will take care of everything on behalf of you so if i'll uh, uh, again talk about kubernetes so it kubernetes helps you manage your infrastructure it helps you manage your containers and in a way it helps you to manage your infrastructure also it helps you to manage your infrastructure also and it manages in an efficient manner it manages in an efficient way which is cost cost optimized which is resource optimized so everything it takes care of within its framework so you don't need to do complex cal calculation that how many containers you need how much traffic you need to take care of um, whether your app would be able to sufficiently provide memory resources to the clients or you would be having sufficient cpu resources so you don't need to worry about all of those things you can just tell kubernetes to deploy your application and kubernetes will take care of managing your containers it will take care of managing your infrastructure and it will do it efficiently and in the background it will manage all the resources like memory cpu whatever your app needs it will take care of all of those things i like to tell one more scenario let's say you uh, today your application is running on these three containers let's say due to any unforeseen reason your container 3 goes down it gets crashed let's say the machine where it was running that machine crashed due to which your container goes down then again it is kubernetes responsibility that if any container which was if any app which was supposed to run on three containers if it is not running on three containers it will automatically launch a new container it will automatically launch a new container and it will deploy your app onto a new container so a new container c4 will come up your app would be deployed on c4 and you will again have three instances three containers of your application so this is again a great feature which kubernetes provides that it constantly manages manages your infrastructure it's it's not if it's not that you have submitted your application to kubernetes and then kubernetes forgets about your application it's not like that it's constantly observing your app application that whether the containers that you have requested you are getting those containers or not if at any point of in deploy your deployment or any point whenever you have deployed any time your application goes down at any container kubernetes will make sure it comes comes up again so so that is where i was saying that it's a great tool to optimize your containers whenever you are uh, you are you you are deploying your application you are using containerized framework for your application you would definitely need kubernetes to manage your infrastructure otherwise you will not be able to scale up within your organization and this is the reason that today many organizations are adopting kubernetes along with docker it's not that organizations are using docker alone they are using docker in complement with kubernetes kubernetes is must 
you you might have seen that many organizations are shifting towards they have a dedicated devops team which manages kubernetes cluster and they take care of all of those deployments your app deployments through onto the kubernetes cluster using this platform so this is about kubernetes now i'll talk about the kubernetes architecture so let's deep down deep dive into the architecture and different components within kubernetes so let me write down here architecture and components and i'll briefly talk about all of the components pretty much all of the components what it contains internally how and how it does all of those things very efficiently so at a high level kubernetes follows the concept of master and slave so it follows the concept of master and slave so kubernetes is it's not a single machine right it's a cluster you would need to set up where you would have multiple nodes so you will have multiple nodes onto your cluster and onto them onto these nodes only your apps would be running now these nodes uh, these could be your physical servers also or it could be vms also uh, kubernetes uh, is supported with both type of infrastructure it could be physical infrastructure it could be vms no, but there are multiple nodes so these nodes are called slaves and then we have a master which manages all of these nodes right and on master also there are lot of components running which helps to manage all of these all of these nodes so the slaves are called nodes and the master is called control plane control why it is called control plane because in this plane kubernetes would be controlling all of its services all of its applications through master onto the nodes so there are two major two major components within kubernetes one is the control plane and other one is the nodes now let's talk each of these components in detail what is control plane and what is nodes what all services are running on nodes and what all services are running on control plane and how it coordinates with each other so that your app goes to a kubernetes cluster very smoothly i mean these all these things control plane and nodes are something internal to kubernetes uh cluster from the develop from the developer side point of view you just need to containerize your application and submit it to kubernetes that it that's it after that kubernetes takes care of all of the all of the things but here as we are learning kubernetes so i'll be discussing about these deep dive concepts also also in that in the inside the kubernetes how kubernetes does this does this all of the things for you smoothly and efficiently so as i was saying let's discuss each of the component one by one so we'll start with quick control plane first so control plane it's a master uh, for your kubernetes so it consists of multiple services first is etcd second is api server third is controller and the fourth one is scheduler so these all are service these all modular services are running onto the control plane or the master of the kubernetes cluster so this is these services are running on the master of the kubernetes cluster and i'll will will talk about each of these one by one now what is etcd so etcd you can think of it's a configuration store it's a configuration store or you can think it of as a it's a database uh, of your kubernetes so all of the configurations that you provide for your application let's say you you are saying to kubernetes that this is app 1 you want to run it in three containers and what uh, in order to run the containers you need to specify some docker image also right uh, as uh, as i was mentioning so Uh, earlier in order to learn kubernetes you should be aware about containers and docker so that's where i was coming into that deep inside you would be deploying your docker image only onto the container so so certain configuration let's say in order to deploy your application what what configurations you need to provide to kubernetes you need to provide the basic configuration is let's say you need to specify your your docker image you need to specify that how many containers you want to run you need to specify that uh 
so so let me go back here so this is uh, i was saying that let's say you have a app and you want to deploy it onto three containers so how kubernetes will decide initially that how many containers you want this is basically done through certain configuration that you need to provide to kubernetes so this is this is where this is where the the etcd comes into picture that etcd provides you a configuration store or a database where all of the application let's say 100 applications running every application configuration how many con nodes how many containers it needs how many um, memory resources it needs what is the container size it needs then what is the docker image it is using internally so it's stored within etcd second component is the api server now api server you can think it as a it's a gateway to your kubernetes cluster gateway to your kubernetes cluster so anything you want to do with kubernetes has to be done through api api gateway so every feature every service every module within kubernetes is exposed as an api and you would be interacting to kubernetes cluster through this api server only and internally kubernetes will decide what it has to what it has to do it has to store the configuration in in etcd it has to use the controller it has to use the scheduler it would be done by kubernetes for you it's a kubernetes server only not even you in fact internal nodes within kubernetes so all of those nodes also talks to each other or to the kubernetes master via an api only so they all communicate with each other also via an api server and from outside world if you want to communicate with kubernetes you will also you will also communicate to kubernetes cluster via an api server so so as i mentioned it is a gateway to kubernetes cluster the third component is controller now how kubernetes is designed designed is that that it maintains a separation of concern so every component has its own responsibility and it is achieved through controller so there are bunch of controllers available within kubernetes which does its own job so just to take an example here i was saying let's say you have deployed an app and you have given that you want to run your app on three containers container one two and three and if some container goes down then kubernetes will bring it up automatically for you how it does that it does it with the help of a controller so let's say there is one controller which is replica manager replica manager is one of the controller let's say which manages that if you have given that you want to have three replicas of your container then it will make sure that this controller will make sure that three containers are always running so this is the job of replica manager controller so similar to replica manager controller there are other container also let's say you want to expose your you, your uh, your code as an api as a service then there is a service controller and whole lot of bunch of controllers are available so but the main thing is that for every responsibility there is a different controller there could be controller 2 there could be controller 3 there could be controller 4 so every controller does its own job independently and they maintain their own configuration also within etcd so whatever let's say if these contain containers need to persist something persists the state somewhere so they would be maintaining the state in etcd so it's a internal configuration store also for for kubernetes let's say one of the one of the controller could be let's say they are just observing all the nodes whether all the nodes are up or not they are observing if any nodes goes down then kubernetes should be able to action properly so that is the function of another controller so that is how that is how these controller works every controller is independent of each other and every controller has its own responsibility to take care of within the kubernetes paradigm now let's talk about the fourth component which is scheduler what is scheduler scheduler is basically let's say when you submit your app uh, to kubernetes cluster okay that this is a app you want to run on to kubernetes cluster then scheduler will come into picture scheduler will say okay this is the app and scheduler will schedule your app to be deployed onto the nodes so this component is basically re responsible for deploying your app onto 
the notes and within notes also it's respond uh, it the your app would be launched launched within containers and to be specific in kubernetes uh, the the your app would be launched within a pods and we will discuss about these pods concept later in the video just hold on for this concept for the time being you can think of that your app would be launched um, uh, inside the containers as as you might have seen in the dockers also so your app would be launched within the containers and that that those containers spinning up of those containers would be scheduled with the help of a scheduler and this scheduler will come into picture at that point of time so this is the these are all the components of uh, control plane now moving to the pods uh, sorry moving to the nod nodes so here we talked we'll talk about nodes now now master would be let's say there would be one master or two master within your within your kubernetes cluster and let's say one would be active and second would be passive just to make the cluster your kubernetes cluster highly available but the master would be you would have few instances of master which needs to monitor the cluster but within the cluster you will have multiple nodes these nodes or slaves are the actual actual machines where your apps are deployed let's say if you have thousand apps getting deployed uh, in in multiple containers then all the containers would be spinned up within these nodes so there would be multiple uh, nodes within your cluster so that's that's where i was i have created multiple boxes here so mm, there would be multiple nodes within your cluster and independent individual services within within these nodes that each what does what does each node consist of so each node consist of first is the kubelet agent kubelet agent second is the kubernetes proxy and third is the your container run environment container run environment and we will discuss about each of these three now so what is kubelet agent so kubelet agent you can think it of that kubelet agent is available on all of the nodes not only kubelet agent but all of these three components kubelet agent cube kubernetes proxy and container run environment all of these components are available on all of the nodes so these services are installed on all of the nodes and to be specific for the kubelet agent kubelet agent job is to communicate with your master that it is up and alive so this kubelet agents ensures that your node is alive um, and it keeps on sending this information to the to the master that i am alive you can submit any application to me if you want to host uh, launch up any containers uh, onto uh, onto my my space that then uh, then uh, then me as a node i am alive so it keeps on sending the heartbeat to the master and then that's how master gets to know that which all nodes are alive and which nodes uh, are not alive so that it can schedule the deployment it can schedule the app containers appropriately on the nodes which are active so kubelet agent you can think of it's kind of a heartbeat agent heartbeat mechanism which keeps the master updated whether it's alive or not kubernetes service kubernetes service is the second component uh, sorry kubernetes proxy kubernetes proxy is the second component and its job is to make the network components within this node available outside the world what does it mean let me make it more simpler so let's say you have deployed your application onto it onto a particular node your app is running so how you would be able to access your app you need to expose this app onto some port and you need to exp or, or, uh, access this app via certain ip or an endpoint right so this thing exposing your app to an ex external world is managed use managed using a network protocols and all of those network protocols are taken care by kubernetes proxy so kubernetes proxy you can think it of it's a uh, its job is to have a proper network interface for your application and this job is done by kubernetes proxy 
द थर्ड पीस इज कंटेनर रन एनवायरमेंट नाउ कंटेनर रन एनवायरमेंट यू कैन थिंक इट ऑफ इट्स ए डॉकर कंपोनेंट विद इन यूर नोट सो एवरी नोट मोस्ट ऑफ द मोस्ट ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विच यूज इज क्यूबिनेटर्स दे कम विद दे यूज डॉकर इंटरनली एज इट कंटेनर रन एनवायरमेंट बट कंटेनर रन एनवायरमेंट कुड बी एनी थिंग एल्स ऑल्सो अदर दैन डॉकर बट जस्ट टू मेक द थिंग सिंपलर यू कैन थिंक कंटेनर रन एनवायरमेंट is a docker component within all the nodes because eventually you have to run containers within the nodes and containers you would be able to run only when you have container run environment or maybe you have docker installed on all of the nodes so uh, these three components are on the slave side kubelet agent kubernetes proxy and container run environment so this is how the whole architecture within kubernetes works so just to be just to draw a line so you have a master here on the left hand side so you have a one or two nodes master which would be in active passive uh, one would be active and second would be passive and you have a bunch of nodes here which are your which are which is part of your kubernetes cluster and you would be deploying your applications in a containerized infrastructure within these nodes and all of these nodes all of these slaves which i am creating a box over so all of these nodes would be managed by these two masters and this is how kubernetes works in a master slave architecture and all of these components communicate with each other be it on the control plane side or be it on the node side so this is how all of the th- concepts tied up to each other and provides you a smoother experience all of these things works internal to kubernetes you don't need to take care of anything what you need to do is you need to tell to master okay that you need to deploy an app you need these these resources and you want to run a particular docker image that's it all of the things other things would be managed within managed by kubernetes and now you can see that kubernetes is a highly complex architecture inside but from outside world it's it it's very simple to submit your application and that is why it's becoming widely popular okay now moving on to the next set of concepts we have talked about the kubernetes architecture and internal components we'll talk about some more concepts or components within kubernetes so the first uh, first thing i i i like to cover is cube ctl what is cube ctl now let now you have basic idea about kubernetes cluster so let's say you have you, this is your kubernetes cluster this is your master and behind the master let's say you have multiple nodes running this is your kubernetes cluster and uh, and uh, i'm sure now you have now you can visualize it better what what all things are running on your master and what all things are running on your nodes um see so based on the concept we have discussed here now cube what is cube ctl now so i told you that one of the component within master is api server and anything you have to do with your kubernetes cluster it has to be done via api whether you want to submit your any app for deployment you want to change any configuration within your cluster you want to i mean anything you want to do you want to bring some containers down you want to create some new containers anything you want to do api is the gateway for your community for your kubernetes cluster there is no other way that you can talk to kubernetes cluster now cube ctl it's a command line interface it's a command line interface which helps you to communicate with this apis now it expo- this command line interface is exposes different commands let's say you want to view all the all the all the containers so the command is cube ctl get pods so and as i mentioned that hold on to the concept of pods we are going to cover this pods concept also but uh, you can think it for now that pods is a container it's not actually container uh, but for the time being you can assume that pods is similar to container and we will discuss it in in few minutes what these actual pod is but coming back to the cube ctl concept so using cube ctl you can you can communicate with the, uh, the kubernetes cluster using cli command line um, interface 
using the kubectl commands and behind the scenes it would be using the kubernetes apis and it would be doing all the stuff onto the kubernetes cluster so it's a great utility you can think of it you can call it as a utility using which you can do command line you can run your uh, commands on the command line on a cli and you can communicate with your kubernetes cluster now second concept i would like to touch upon is the replica set and i have already talked in brief about replica set so replica set uh, con replica set is a type of a controller again going back to this notation so controller there is on the master there is a controller also right there is a controller also on the master and one of the controller is replica set controller one of the controller is replica set controller so it is a controller within your master or a control plane and its duty is to maintain the same number of replicas for your application containers which you have requested for and as i was explaining earlier let's say your app has uh, was supposed to run or contain three containers c1 c2 and c3 so replica set will ensure that this app gets deployed onto three containers and it will always ensure that it's always running on three containers any container goes down it will create new container and it will achieve the same same number that is c1 c2 and c4 which is three three containers if the expected behavior was to run your app on three containers so that is something that is the concept of replica set uh, which is provided out of the box within kubernetes third concept i would like to cover is uh, volumes now let's say so if you mount to if you want to mount certain external volumes let uh, external hard disk space which you can leverage within your containers so you can do it with the help of a uh, volumes and this is the concept within kubernetes that it helps you to mount external space mount external disk space uh, so it gives you some persistent storage and its usage is to give you persistent storage because containers are not persistent once you stop the container once you delete the container everything you have stored within the container will go away it will not be persistent but many times within your application you need to store something which should be persistent irrespective your containers are up or down or deleted or removed you want to have some persistent storage so that can be achieved with mountable volumes and this is pretty much possible using the concept of kubernetes volumes and one more thing i would like to cover is the secrets within kubernetes and secrets you can think it of as a, uh, a kind of a key value configurations uh, key value configurations so you can use it to store any configuration which your app wants to use certain sensitive information let's say database credentials or api secrets your uh, your application is using internal internally so anything any configuration any sensitive information you want to store you can store it at kubernetes level and these secrets would be available to your containers and you can access those secrets through key value store uh, within your within your containers so this is another concept so these high level concept i wanted to touch upon which is replica set uh, volume secrets and kubectl now the last but the but not the least and in fact one of the most important concept where most people gets confused is the concept of pods now i'll talk about the concept of pods although this should have been my starting point but i'm covering in the end so that you you are aware about the big picture of kubernetes and uh, now you would be able to relate it better that why how pods are different from containers so let me write down here pods so we have been uh, talking containers and pods interchangeably in this video but these are not interchangeable words these two are different things which would be clear to you now so what are pods so as we discussed that whenever you want to deploy your application whenever you want to deploy your application you would you in docker world how it used to happen was that you containerize this application and then you run containers 
let's say you have con you have this container and you run your app onto this container right but in kubernetes uh, along uh, th uh, this the same application is deployed within a pod so you deploy your application within a pod and your container is inside the pod so you can think of pod is a it's it's a wrapper on top of a container uh, which encapsulates pod encapsulates the container within so container is inside the pod and why kubernetes has done that because in pod you can have multiple containers also running and uh, if you have heard about the sidecar pad sidecar pattern uh, let's say you want to have certain basic services for example let's say your application is exposed as an api and you want to have certain authorization authentication mechanism so you don't want and you don't want to hard code or or um you want to have loose coupling for authorization and authentication and you want to have a separate module for authorization and authentication then you can launch a second container as a sidecar pattern within your same pod and uh, this pod will have both the things like your container also and and the sidecar uh, container also which which is which which might be authorization and authentication and this is just one example but there are other lot of other things which which kubernetes needs internally within the pod and it uh, 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 let's say for example service discovery when whenever you have uh, deployed your container and you want to exp access it using some endpoint so internally it uses certain features of a pod only using which it discovers the container that okay where where is your service running so there are certain things which kubernetes needs internally to to manage its architecture efficiently and that is the reason that uh, kubernetes has this additional concept of a pod and they have wrapped this pod around the containers uh, so it's not necessary that within pod you you will always have multiple containers as i mentioned in in most of the common scenarios you will have a pod and you will have a container where your your application is running in most of the scenarios you will have this kind of uh, setup only but pod is something which is um, supporting the kubernetes architecture it needs certain internal metadata about this container which docker does not provide out of the box so kubernetes has its own implementation of having its own wrapper uh, encapsulating the containers and and this implementation eventually provided more flexibility to have more containers inside the pod also as we were discussing earlier so going back to the concept as i as i was saying earlier so although we used containers and pods interchangeably but but conceptually these two are different terms at a high level you have a pod at a high level you have a pod within the pod you have a container within the pod you have a container and inside the container your app will be running inside the container you will your app would be running so this is how it works a pod can be a can be a single container or it can be a group of containers also so both the things are possible within kubernetes so this is the concept of pod so this is uh, this is everything what i wanted to talk uh, in kubernetes basic uh, concept so we started just i'm giving a quick recap of the concepts we discussed we started with what is kubernetes where we talked about different uh old approach of uh, deployment and containerized approach of deployment and then we talked about kubernetes comes out of the picture to help you to manage your containerized infrastructure so that is where kubernetes comes into picture and then we talked about some added features like auto scaling scaling up or scaling down your application managing your infrastructure if something goes down it can automatically come up self healing features we discussed about that then we deep dive into architecture and components where we talked about the control plane and the nodes your cluster consists of two things control plane which is your master and all the nodes which are which is the slaves and how every component is in sync with each other through multiple uh, different components uh, within control plane and on the nodes we discussed about that and then we talked about certain added components within kubernetes which is kubectl which is command line interface then replica set which is which helps to maintain the minimum replica which you have re requested for then volume to mount external volume secrets to source sensitive information and the last we discuss about the concept of pods 
which is a wrapper around container it could be a single container or it could be a group of containers within the box so this is the basic concept we have uncovered in kubernetes that's it for this video if you like this video do share it with others do press the like button and do subscribe our channel for more technical videos thank you